Hey everyone, how you doing? My name's Gus. I'm a cosmetic and implant dentist based around London and today we're talking about part two of my osteoporosis videos. Okay, so last week I posted a video uh, which helped explain what osteoporosis is and if you can have dental implants with osteoporosis. And guess what? It wasn't a clear answer. So if you want to click on the, that video, you find out more, you can either go to my page or maybe there's a, a pop-up I can put up, up here somewhere to help you find that. But today we're going to talk about a very popular medication which is prescribed to those people who have osteoporosis. And the potential side effects of this medication which can have an effect in the jaw. Okay, now I don't want to be scaremongering in this video, okay, because some of the stuff I'm going to talk about is quite kind of scary and I want to put things in perspective. This medication, which is it's bisphosphonate, okay, so bisphosphonate is a fantastic medication for people who have osteoporosis. It helps slow down the, the whole bone cycle, which means you lose bone at a slower rate, helping you to maintain the bone strength in your whole body, reducing the risk of fractures. And for, for cancer patients, it's, you know, it reduces massive amounts of pain and bone pain and things like that. The, the, the benefits of bisphosphonates for those people who have um, a condition like osteoporosis where it's prescribed are massive. Now, the problem is that in certain situations, it can affect the jaws. Now, typically, if you're on a low dose, this isn't going to be a big deal for you. So the possible outcome that I'm talking about is something called osteonecrosis of the jaws. Okay, and this means that following some treatment, anything surgical, so possibly even just removing a tooth or placing a dental implant, possibly braces, I'm not sure about that, but braces it affects bone turnover around teeth. But all of these kind of treatments can possibly lead to necrosis of the jaw, which is a posh way of saying a section of bone in the jaw dies. Okay, now this sounds horrific, especially when I've framed it like that. Um, and it... Uh, it's, it's not great because it's not easily treated. It doesn't hurt though, which is a little bit weird because um, I think one of my patients has had this, okay? And I can't be sure because it did get better by itself after a long period of time. But this is what it looked like. It, it, it's not great, okay? It, this doesn't hurt at all. Um, it's it's just a, it's just there, right? But it was it's concerning for me because I knew we had done a little bit of surgical treatment for him. I know that in the in his past he was on these medications. And here's the thing: with bisphosphonates, they stick around in your body for a long time. So if you had a period of time where you were on these medications for, and they were especially on a high. Um, high dosage, they're going to stay in your body for a long time, which means you need to be aware when you're having dental treatment, especially anything surgical, that this is a possible risk. Now, necrosis of the jaws is it's not only caused by bisphosphonates, okay? There's there's actually a whole bunch of medications and I've got a, a printout from a lecture I went on a couple of years ago which lists some of these medications. So what I'll do in the comments underneath this video, um, I will write out what the most common um, the kind of medications are that we know about. And what's more important than this is the dosage. So if you're taking a low dosage, we know that this isn't really a problem, but if you're taking a high dosage, then it puts you more at risk, okay? And each medication is going to have its own kind of dosage on limit on what, what is low and what's high. But also, the way that you take this medication matters as well. So the most typical way of taking a bisphosphonate medication is just in a pill okay so you take it orally so again this is relatively low risk but if you're taking it through a vein if you're taking it intravenously then this puts you at a higher risk as well so let's say you're in a situation where you are taking bisphosphonate and it's a high dose what should you do should you have dental implants uh, my recommendation is no okay it's just it's not worth the risk let's say you got 
uh, necrosis. I keep wanting to say radio necrosis. It's not that. Radio necrosis is due to um, radiotherapy, but this is medication induced um, osteonecrosis. Okay, so it's a certain medication which brings about this necrosis, this, this dying of the jawbone. So if you get it, although it doesn't hurt, right, it's, it's going to leave you with this lump of jawbone which is exposed, okay, that in itself is not great. We're not sure there could be a bacterial uh, connection to this as well, so, you know, we, we don't want that. The way that some people treat this is by having to go into like an oxygen chamber for a long period of time and to be honest, it's, it's not something we know 100%. Look, this is how we're going to treat this in your situation. So because there's so many question marks and we don't know if it's going to happen in your case, my honest advice would be, look, look at some other kind of tooth replacement. And we know dentures are not fantastic, but it might be the best situation, solution in your, in your case. So if you if you have been taking a medication and it's a bisphosphonate or one of the other ones which I mentioned in the comments below this video, then you should definitely tell your, your dentist and your, your oral surgeon or whatever, even aggressive gum treatment can sometimes cause these kind of problems. So it is really important to, to tell your dentist, but also you should tell your dentist if you've had it in the past because Drug, the amount of time a drug stays in your body is determined by something called its half-life. The amount of time it takes for the concentration to reach half, okay? So if something's got a short half-life, it's taken out of your body pretty quickly. If something's got a long half-life, it stays there for a long time. And bisphosphonates are a kind of a class of drug which stay in your body for a long time. So let's say you had them and you had intravenous, um, bisphosphonates five years ago and then you slowly came off them well there's a possibility that they could still be in in your system okay and that means if you if you now want to have dental implant treatment or you want to have any surgical treatment at all then it does still put you at risk of all of these horrible things um, even though it's been such a long time since you stopped that treatment okay so I don't want to scare everyone. Like I said at the beginning of this video, right? These drugs are amazing for everything else in the body, okay? Everything else that's going on. We're just dealing with this tiny little section here. That's all I deal with, right? Is this little tiny bit here. Let's not get hung up on dental implants, even though, you know, I know it's a fantastic treatment. It's not right for anyone. And this is one of those situations where, you know, it may not be right for you weighing up the risks and benefits of, of this kind of treatment. So uh, as always, I hope you found this useful. If you've got questions, comments, leave them below and I will try and read and respond to everyone. Okay, so take care until next time.